Google is looking for some help, and Chamberlain makes a questionable decision for HomeKit users. This is Mac Voices. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Mac Voices After Dark. Uncensored, off topic, and always off the wall. Mac Voices After Dark is available as a benefit to our Patreon subscribers. Sign up at patreon.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Google is looking for some help from an unlikely ally, and Chamberlain has succeeded in alienating a whole lot of HomeKit users, and the Mac Voices Live panel has thoughts on both. Let's go back and let the panel do the talking. To shift back to something maybe arguably a little more controversial, um, this is an article from the also from The Verge. Um, Oops. Yes, Google turns to regulators to make Apple open up a message. Does this surprise anybody that, no. Did did anybody see the post that had, you know, listed like two dozen failed Google messaging products? Mm -hmm. No, I missed that. It was in, re- in in regard to this, like, you know, uh, you know, and, you know, there, there's just been a ton of them, and, you know, to the point where most of them have come and gone and we, we don't, you know, don't even remember their names. Yeah. Um, and so Google's going to, you know, say how other people should run their messaging products mm-hmm. seems kind of... Uh, Yeah, it kind of seems to me that Google will lose interest in RCS before they get Apple to adopt it. Oh, well, there's that too. Is that a reflection on Google's attention span or Apple's uh, steadfastness? Both. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That, and to be perfectly honest, RCS is not a very well used feature. Uh, over in Europe, let's be honest, it's WhatsApp and WhatsApp. Um, over here, honestly, I don't have any problem communicating with my Android using friends and colleagues over normal uh, text means. But to add on to that, too, I think the article was talking about the um, businesses that were maybe being kept out of being able to message through iMessage if you didn't have it. But there's lots of means to communicate with a business, too. Mm-hmm. Um, Mark, Mark Fuccio says, cynically speaking, if you can't, if you can't compete on the, pro- on the merits of your products, run and ask the government for help. Hmm. Yeah. So there is that, but I feel like at time we may be coming back to the whole Google discussion about and and, and not knowing enough about RCS. And Ben, maybe you can enlighten us. But is this one more opportunity for Google to obtain more information about about us as iMessage users? Honestly, I don't know enough about it for that. It's so very little used um as far as i can tell uh this is all uh it seems to be kind of a market share ploy where google blames the the market share of the iphone on basically uh uh green bubbles Eric? The issue I have with RCS is it's it has a carrier dependency. So you're saying, oh, hey, Apple should join in and support this standard that we'd prefer, and they just got away from having carrier dependency to, to go to something that requires a carrier involvement makes absolutely no sense. You know, you can do messages on your your 
watch, you can do it on your phone, you can do it on the computer, you can do it on the iPad, you can do it on the iPad that has Wi-Fi access without a cellular connection, you can do it on a phone with or without a cellular connection. That's important. Yeah. And quite frankly, in that regard, um, there are messaging platforms that Google has gotten rid of that would probably be a better fit than RCS. But carriers want to support a standard that requires carriers stuck in the middle. Mm -hmm. So is it... (laughs) Uh, Eric, is a counter to that, though, that with iMessage, I have to have Apple, Apple in the middle? And... (laughs) <laughs> yeah well i don't have like, I, I don't mind having apple in the middle uh, i'd prefer to have them in, than the carriers well what about doesn't, your doesn't your, whatsapp have whatsapp in the middle yeah well they have meta in the middle yeah but oh, i mean oh, that's it, good so i mean the issue i have is okay so let's say they make rcs a standard well if you make it a standard it doesn't work on computers how are you going to make that work on computers oh all of a sudden now google's in the middle instead of apple and everything has to go through Google and a carrier. I, you know, talk about losing privacy. Mm-hmm. Good point. Good point. I, ju- I just, you know, I still remember the uh, the conversation that Tim Cook had. You know, when they were saying green bubble versus blue bubble, and it's like if you want a blue bubble, you know, buy a Mac. Yeah. There was also. Um, I don't have it here, and this was completely freeform, but I was listening to the daily uh, Tom Merritt's Daily Tech News show today, and uh, they were doing a piece on apparently why teenagers don't like Android. Um, and some of this it folds in with that, along with advertising and inferior performance and all. It's it's worth going and listening to. So if you can find the Daily Tech News show for, what is it, it's November 14th, um, it might be something you would... Uh, you would enjoy hearing. I mean, there also is something to be said for a uh, messaging system where you can start the message on your computer and then switch over to your phone and then go somewhere where you only have your watch and finish on your watch and then come back to your phone and switch to your iPad and all of the message stream and all of the parts are on each of the different devices and you have the whole history. I can't tell you the number of times I've been totally annoyed because part of the message is sitting on one device and the other part is on another device. And it takes me two or three days before I can push it all back together again because I have to visit each location. I don't want to ever have to live with that. Mm -hmm. Great point. Great point. And I mean, I'd also like to reiterate why. Google is trying to do this in Europe. Uh, iMessage versus RCS is mainly U.S. Mm. Yeah, neither iMessage or RCS has much of a foothold in Europe. Okay. <laughs> this is um that we may wrap up with this one this happened shortly after i know dave discussed it on in touch with ios um but i still think i I still shake my head at this uh chamberlain the uh, garage door control maker has basically shut down all their uh all all the interaction with uh the sdks and third parties so that you would have to use their app to open and close your garage door, and oh, by the way, they're going to show you ads while you're doing it. I think they're in serious contention for uh, the arrogance award that we were previously going to give to Microsoft. I mean, oh, I think this is this is way worse than what that issue with Microsoft we discussed earlier. I mean, this this is just unbelievable to me, and it it makes me want to say, Chamberlain, I would never would never buy another product from you, because they're they're leaving ex- they're leaving existing users high and dry. You have to use I, their app. I think they are going to drive a lot of customers away forever. Um, 
to be perfectly honest with that, Chamberlain is the number one garage door ma- opener maker by a mile. Yeah. Yeah, they're the they're mm-hmm. the eight hundred pound gorilla in the space. So. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Why I don't? I mean, there's there's genie, but I mean, why I don't trust them with their uh, their smart products anymore? I, in a lot of cases, there's not just not a lot of other options. Yeah, Chamberlain and Leftmaster, they're they're both. And now that they uh, the MyQ platform is really even built into their garage door operators now anyway. So mm-hmm. you don't have to have it as a separate device. You can you can you buy it as is. Um I've mentioned before that my my home automation system is a control four platform and they dropped their MyQ support two years ago. So this is something that that uh uh that that Chamberlain or, or the my Q Chamberlain Liftmaster. Uh this is something that they've been working towards for quite some time. But yeah, I'm disappointed they dropped HomeKit. Uh I'm disappointed that uh um just the, the position that they've taken. I don't think they'll be successful. I, I think you know is it just like how General Motors is dropping CarPlay and only going mm-hmm. to support the, the Android platform. Um you know, is, is there something similar here that that will will the market bear out and convince them to think otherwise? I hope one so. Thing, one thing I saw was, was a little bit different between what Chevy's doing, and you know, those cars haven't been made yet. You know, it's the what the twenty twenty four models or twenty twenty five. You know, in this case, it's folks who had already bought the product. I, I did have a clarifying question. I wasn't able to find it in the article when. It says here that the this access was unauthorized access to its APIs. Was it advertised on the box or online or anything when people bought it originally that they would be able to have access? Or were people kind of, you know, legally at that time skirting the system to be able to get to gain that smart home access? Um it did. Um, the MyQ system did use to support multiple uh, smart device systems. I can tell you that. Whether it was on the box, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't recall. Yeah, I'm just wondering if even like you know, you know, getting sued or something like that. Would they have any you know grounds to stand on? Maybe they they never advertised it. It was just a nice feature they had for a while, but now they don't. But I. S- I know I talked to Chamberlain. This has been years ago at CES, and it seemed like they promised, they promised it was coming, it was coming, it was coming. It finally got here because I would get comments on on the YouTube video version of of that interview about you know that it had never come, and it finally came. And then they pulled this. What I don't remember though is exactly what what the uh, the mechanism or the platform is going to be. In fact, it may not have even been developed as a smart home platform at that time, whatever it was. So, but, mm-hmm. but the, well, first of all, I want to give Brett in the, in the chat room credit. He said, there's, there are third party controllers that wire into the garage, do, garage opener button contacts on the unit itself. It completely bypasses the manufacturer. I have one from Best Buy that I installed in my apartment, apartment's garage and it works and it's been great so apparently there is a workaround uh that i'm yeah. sure that kicks the daylights out of the warranty but no yeah, probably I mean, not because it's yeah. designed to have a button hooked into it so um yeah, maybe. and and then they must these third party device must have their own separate sensor for the door being up or open or closed Yep. Um there there's a similar unit uh from I gotta forget it whether it's it it's either uh Miras or Kara. Uh that's pretty popular on, on Amazon. I, I know I read a story that mentioned Miras. Mm-hmm. Brian, uh 
state what you put in the chat because that you took the the thinking right out of my head. I don't do that, but I think that this would be another workaround. Yeah, there, right now what I use in my own house is a camera in my garage, and you know I'll you know I'll go down the road and I'm like, oh dang it, did I did I close the garage? <laughs> you know, and and you know it's nice to be able to pull over on the side of the road. Look at the camera. Okay, yeah, it's closed. You know, um, you know, or if it's open, then I gotta obviously go back. But that whole go back thing, um, I haven't bought one, but I've I've seen uh, this product from a company called Switchbot, and I think it's compatible with HomeKit, and uh, they make products. And I'll, I'll get a link for the little device, but it's like a little like a button pusher, and you connect it, you know, close by with like. Um, you know where the button, where the where the garage opener is in your in your garage, and it just hits the little button, you know, and it it has you mean like know, physically all physically like a... touches the button. Yeah, let me see if I can. I'll grab a link, but yeah, yeah. it's kind of neat. I, I've been looking at it; they're reasonably priced. I want to say this one. I want to say is uh, maybe forty. No, it's thirty it's thirty dollars. Yeah, thirty dollars and. Yeah, I've been looking into them a little bit, but it, it physically presses buttons. So the switch bot bot, yeah, for thirty bucks. Hmm. Uh, Brett followed up his his comments in the chat. Said yes, there's a, there's a sensor that sticks to the back of the door. It has a battery that goes dead from mm-hmm. time to time. That's the only drawback. So the the one thing though about this story is that it seems to point to Chamberlain wanting to be able to show you ads sort of like the GM discussion we had for several weeks here how much revenue are these people i mean how much can they realistically charge and how much revenue are they doing that in in the name of or or in the name of alienating their customers I take a different spin on that, um, and I and I agree with with your point. But I really think that uh, let's let's take the advertising thing and put that aside. I really think it comes down to revenue generated by services, which is exactly what Apple's doing too. If you think about it, is that the the, the you know, and I assume it, based on what I'm hearing and reading about my Q and my experience with them, is that they just want to try to capture that that revenue and charge you for the convenience um, to use their platform. And uh, um, so I, I think that's where, where it's heading. Uh, we can get deep into the car, the Android car thing, and, and that's a little bit different argument too. But I think that's what my Q is doing. And I think they're looking at all the revenue that, in, uh, in this example, Apple is generating from their services menu. And they say, hey, we can do that too. That's how I kind of view this. So Yeah, I, I have no doubt that's what they're thinking um i just also don't think they're able to understand that they're not going to get that money i understand that hasn't worked very well for bmw with the they're trying to get people to pay subscriptions for heated seats Mm -hmm. and my understanding is that's a big flop they pulled away from that right exactly Mm -hmm. didn't work and i think the same things you know it's a garage door. And, you know, if I open my phone to open or close the garage door and I see an ad, am I really going to be like, oh, I was going to open my garage door, but, you know, I think I'll buy this product that I'm seeing here. <laughs> <laughs> as, as you drive into the back of the garage and smash your car. Um, Web, I... So if I'm understanding you correctly, you think that that they are looking at the revenue stream for the ad, from the advertising I as, think I'll, as I don't know a service? Yeah, they probably yeah. want to charge a subscription too. Yeah, like that, now you got to pay $3 a month to open and close your garage door. I think that's more the issue and not the advertising thing, even though that that's what they've other people have stated that I don't know if I've heard Chamberlain come right out and say that. Maybe they have. Um but uh, I, I think it's just a subscription service is what they're getting to. And they don't want to share it with Apple. So they don't want to make it part of uh, HomeKit or, or, or any of those other platforms, too. So, Well, maybe they just 
maybe they just did that gift basket thing that Ben was talking about because maybe they just opened the door for someone else to come in and and get a significant foothold in the market. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time we've seen an 800-pound gorilla get posed. (laughs) So, Hmm. I don't know. It's, it's, all this stuff just points to a world that is changing, and and not just the technology, but also the the revenue streams and how business we look models. at well business models and how we look at what we own and when we're purchasing it. Are we really purchasing it? Uh, whoever said the the BMW model, you know, if I would think that if I buy a BMW that has heated seats, that I have bought a BMW that has heated seats. And would not be expecting to pay a, a a a subscription to be able to turn it on. Uh, well, a lot of BMW customers felt similarly. You know, this all kind of reminds me of IBM from forty years ago. And you know, if you if you look at IBM, you know, in nineteen eighty when they were at the peak of their and they 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 were like basically felt that you know they owned that market and it was just about extraction. And it took a long time, but, you know, and IBM's still in business, but it's certainly not, it's not the force that it was 50 years ago. Yeah. They, they kind of killed the, they killed the goose. Um, and uh, Yeah, but I think the technology changed on them too. When they went from the mainframe to the distributed processing model, I think that really changed IBM's model a lot. But they, their customers knew that, you know, IBM was just, you know, trying to fleece them at every point. So, you know, I think IBM could have made that transition a lot differently. And the, and the other point was IBM wouldn't go into areas aggressively because that would undercut their ability to, you know, fleece, you know, their, under the existing model. You know, in other words, they were, they were wedded to that existing model kind of like the opposite of Steve Jobs is like we're going to kill our you know ourselves we're not uh, kill it ourselves we're going to be the ones that that uh knock it out we're not going to let somebody else come and knock us off our pedestal <laughs> we're going to do it but most companies don't have that they're like you know how can we hang on and and extract every bit of rent that we can from our monopoly position and, and as strange as it sounds, I don't even have a problem with that as long as they're delivering value or or giving me something for it. But it's it's these things where they seem to be – they're removing value and then almost trying to extort me into paying to get it back that, that bugs me a bit. Um, that's, you know, that's what I'm saying. It used to be, um, you know – the same thing with IBM that they you know they sell somebody an upgrade and then I, I remember at a college I was at that they, they came in and they you know they'd make everybody leave the room and then they'd flip a switch inside the box and it's like oh that's an extra ten thousand dollars a month and and they used to have you know these big huge boxes that had little tiny bits of electronics in them because you know they're like nobody's going to want to pay you know. Twenty thousand dollars a month for a little box, so we'll, we'll give them a, a big, huge box that's mostly air. Yeah. Well, it's not um, expensive enough to to make it worthwhile looking for a different solution. You know, so someone will come up with a, a thread solution add-on box for the garage door opener, and it'll just bypass their software entirely, and right. that compatible. Yeah. And that'll get integrated. Well, it looks like this switch bot that that uh, Brian put in is potentially that. I don't know that it has smart home capabilities, but how well, much would I, it cost I, to build I think, it in? You know, I've, I've got some articles bookmarked. I, I think one of them was mentioned talking about the Miras that you know, yeah, people are doing this because there is there is a hardware you know button that can you know so you can hook into that. So it's like, oh, well, now I have to buy another device, but, you know, I'll do it because, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't want to pay Chamberlain, uh, 
you know, three dollars a month or whatever. And you know, that's like you know, you don't pay terrorists, right, or kidnappers, because you know, if you pay Chamberlain, well, then next year they're going to be like, yeah, it's five bucks a month, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'll just you know pay fifty bucks and get a new device that you know. I don't have to pay anything for a month. Both with your wallet. Yeah. Guys, this has been good. I think we got through all but one article. We'll save that one. Um, but I, hopefully we've given some folks uh, a lot to think about tonight. I know you all have given me a couple of things that I, I hadn't thought about from, from some of the stories at certain angles. So thank you. Let's go around the room, let folks know where they can find you, and then we'll uh, we'll get out of here. Um, so I'm just going to keep the same order, uh, although I think it got rearranged, but I'm not sure. I've lost track. Um, so, uh, Brian Flanagan Arthur, thank you for being here. Where can folks connect with you? Oh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, you can find me, uh, uh most often on Mastodon, uh, Brian8944 at Mastodon.cloud. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. Thank you. Eric Bolden, I can't wait to see what you'll come up with next time for the uh, background. Where can folks find you? Um, most of the time at EA Bolden at techhub.social, sometimes EA Bolden at mas.to, and occasionally on Spoutable, um, EA Bolden. Excellent. Thank you. David Ginsburg, you look like you're lit. I am? Yes. <laughs> new lights. New lights is as in lit. <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't, I couldn't help it. I had to do it. <laughs> Where can uh, folks find you, David? I'm not installing new lights. I'm I, you can find me at in touch with iOS and in touch with iOS.com. My YouTube channel, youtube.com dot slash in touch with iOS. I'm here on Tuesdays. I'm on the Mac show on the British Tech Network on Fridays. And uh, you can find me on Mastodon at Dave G sixty five at Mastodon.club. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you, David. The man who married a master quilter, and he demonstrates it every single every single week. Webb, thank you so much for being here. Where can folks connect with you? Chuck, thank you. Uh, I, I'm, I've tried this now for a couple of weeks. It's uh, just at Web Bixby at the platform of your choice. I think I'm on just about all of them. So <laughs> must not be Mastodon, though. Yeah. Oh yeah. But but then you've got to supply. <laughs> What, um, but, but, not also. but you can search it, yeah, yeah. But you can search it, so yeah, really, yeah, you can search, but look but it's web, right? to know what, yeah, you don't uh, have to know what web, web XP at, at twit.social, so yeah, but no, I've I found people that I didn't know where they were, hmm. so. Jim Ray, who is busy looking up Web Bixby on social right now. Where can folks find you? I, 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 I'm already subscribed to him. Oh. Um, <laughs> so I think I am. But uh, I think you are. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't know where I am. I'm, I'm on the. I'm on the interweb somewhere. Wander around and now, uh, Proview Jim P R O V U E. J I M at uh what is it techhub.social. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. He could find Webb, but he couldn't find himself. Um uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm I, I'm the one who's lit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Last but absolutely <laughs> not least, Mr. Ben Rathick. Ben, thank you so much. Um I I I noticed this. You said you weren't a farmer at some point during the discussion. It does look like the field behind you needs a little attention. I agree. Well, that, well, that's a, that's a county. Well, that's a state park. So, oh, okay. <laughs> Where can folks connect with you, Ben? Uh, well, you can find me on social media at Ben Rethig. Uh You can go to uh, Rethig Tech to find my writings. Uh, you can find me on Thursday nights on In Touch with iOS with Mr. Dave Ginsburg. On Wednesday and Fridays, you can find me on the British Tech Network uh, with uh, Mr. Jeff Gamet, who is not with us tonight. And, uh, of course, every Tuesday, you can find me here on 
Mac Voices with Mr. Chuck Joyner. Thank you, Ben. It's always good to have you. Folks, I want to uh, definitely acknowledge the chat room. They've been very busy tonight. Uh, Barry just said that he's been thinking so hard he hasn't had hasn't been able to type. So <laughs> don't hurt yourself, Barry. We, <laughs> but we appreciate you being here. And we appreciate everybody being there and throwing in their comments. It's good to uh, get their perspectives, too. Uh, this is Mac Voices Live, Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, whatever time that is, wherever you are, at youtube.com slash TV. We always have this much fun and sometimes even more. Uh, so come back and join us. And if you aren't able to because you're not in a right time zone, don't worry about it. These shows end up eventually in the Mac Voices feeds so you can subscribe and still hear all the wisdom that we uh, deliver each week. And it's also worth mentioning that we're just about to kick off our Mac Voices holiday gift guides. So you can look for those and it, we will help solve your uh, gift giving problems for the holidays as well. Until the next time, and as always, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices each month. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.